Hey Brick Maniacs, we're back for another Designer's Desk episode. Today we're taking a closer look at the P38. Cody, take it away. Well, as Dylan said, we have the Lockheed Martin P38 Lightning. This is my second attempt at building this model, and it went much better this time than it did the first time. <laughs> uh, first time, as 100 of you or so have bought, or if you got the um, D-Day Bricks book, um, it built the original P38 Lightning, you know, it didn't really balance that well. So I've corrected that issue now where it does balance quite well. Um, on a tricycle landing gear, and tricycle landing gear is really difficult to build. And maintain that ability to sit there without tipping backwards because it's so tail heavy. Um, tricycle landing gear is hard initially, but in this model particularly, it's really far forward, really close to the nose. Um, the middle landing gear is. And I did actually get it to sit backwards a little bit, so it does have that correct stance. Um, anyone who's seen a real P38 Lightning sitting on the ground, it's, it does sit backwards a little bit. Interesting. So I was able to achieve that a little bit. Um, there's brick built camouflage with the yellow noses, kind of going for a D Day invasion stripe version. Um, yeah, so brick-built stripes going horizontally and then also going towards the front. Gives it a super clean look. Yeah, it's, it's fun anytime you can really build those stripes into something. And there's only just a few instances of stickers completing that illusion of the stripes going all the way across. Um, otherwise, there are quite a few printed elements, especially on the nose, creating that white stripe. Um, some are real white elements and some are just a printed stripe just to complete that transition from the dark gray to the light gray nose. Uh, the nose is completely updated entirely from the original model. The original model was kind of a bit chunky, it wasn't very clean looking. Um, I was able to incorporate the machine guns a little bit better in this one than the previous model. And there are four 50 caliber machine guns as well as one 20 millimeter in the nose. Uh, so it packs quite a punch. It could also carry bombs. I didn't include bombs this time, but I did include drop tanks. Uh, also, that's to help sort of offset the counterbalance a little bit. Um, they just hang underneath the wings in the front. That's an updated design, too. There's some new pieces that are available to make a much cleaner looking drop tank. Uh, printed elements, going over that again, there's just printed yellow on the back of the spinner to help complete that look and that transition as opposed to just having a black element there. That sure. element doesn't really come in yellow. And there's printing in the cockpit just for the instrument panel. And then printed fuel ports on top of the wings as well as printed turbochargers. Uh, that's an updated element as well. And I was able to include the minifigure skate ice skate um, into the top of that turbo as well. It's a really nice touch that, that adds a lot of detail, just, just that little bit right there. Yeah, because I think we printed that feature before and this helps to have that aspect of it brick built. I think it adds a little bit. Um, landing gear does retract. Wow, that looks awesome from the bottom too. <laughs> <laughs> So was, it, was it the fork-tailed devil that they called it, or the twin-tailed devil? Fork-tailed fork devil. Fork-tailed, there we go, okay. Devil of some sort. I guess the Japanese would call it uh, Two Planes, One Pilot. Two Planes, <laughs> One Pilot. <laughs> Aptly named. Yeah. So, the gear closes pretty well. Um, I actually think it's better than the original, because the original was kind of straight back and then had a curve right. sort of transitioning, so this kind of retains that angle. Nice slope all the way Slumping down. Slumping all the way back. Uh, yeah, here's the drop tanks I was talking about. That's one of those new elements there. I think it was for like BB-8 droid head or something. <laughs> Not exactly sure what it was. It works. It works. Um, and yeah, once I get a new piece in mind, I tend to use it in other models. So look for that piece to show up again in some of my other plane designs. Very cool. <laughs> um, it'll be nice to use that for other nose cones too. Maybe an updated P-40. But I guess a little bit of history about the plane. 
this was introduced in 1941 and originally designed to be an interceptor, something to counter the Japanese Zero. And it did that quite well. Uh, it was a pretty good match against the Zero. Uh, for a lot of reasons, I guess. One, it was fast. Two, it was agile and it packed enough of a punch. Um, and it was really easy to fly. Pilots really loved the P-38. It was received very well, mostly used by the Army, um, the Army Air Corps. Of course, the Air Force didn't exist back then until post-war. And so maybe in the future we'll do some other versions, maybe some Pacific color schemes. Uh, we have the license to make the P-38 now, so we can, <laughs> we can always make more of that model. Um, it was also a great fighter bomber, uh, as well as a night fighter and reconnaissance aircraft. And they still fly them today. Not, not for war purposes, but... Just an incredibly versatile aircraft in, in general yeah. then. Yeah. And I think that's all I really got to say about the aircraft. I think we can switch on over to Lando and he can talk about the new figure. Sounds like a plan. All right, let's turn it over to Lando and hear more about the figure that comes with this kit. All right, yeah, here we have the minifigure that comes with Cody's kit. Uh, this is a standard U.S. pilot from that era, 44-45 um, um, era. You'd see that A9 oxygen mask on the head right there. So I have that. That's artwork debuting for the first time in this kit. Oh, very um, cool. Yeah, so it's, it's um, I don't know, kind of a futuristic looking mask, I think, compared to some of them from the era. era. Um, and uh, it's just the oxygen mask, right? So uh, it's goggles, of course, with that, a little bit of a tint going on there, um, a greenish tint. You'd see them in different colors. Mm -hmm. um, a green was one of them. Uh, I think they might have had interchangeable lenses, from what I could tell. So uh, moving down, leather jacket, and we have that um, parachute harness that's printed all the way around, including on the sides there, if I can get that. And as well as that life preserver underneath of that, and that's kind of just like a pull cord uh, life preserver that just poofs up. Yep. And uh, yeah, there's a nice red handle there to uh, pull the parachute mm -hmm. uh, in the event that he needs to bail out of that airplane. So pretty sketchy. I would not want to have to pull that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Nobody wants to jump out of an airplane, especially one that's uh, going down. Right. <laughs> uh, and then trousers and the service uh, boots there. So a standard, cool, slick looking minifigure pilot. Um, I always thought they looked kind of nice for that for that era. So. Yeah, and an excellent compliment to the uh, new P-38 Lightning. Uh, make sure to leave a comment, let us know what you think about this model and this figure. Thanks for watching.